Welcome back to my Cherokee campaign commentary. Last time we defeated the Iroquois in a battle to defend our territory and then went on to defeat the main army of Louisiana with a nice sneaky rear attack as well. So that meant we could send a smaller force to actually go and take all of Louisiana's territory so that wiped them out as a faction in a nice one-sided battle. A failed attempt to go and attack the Iroquois ended up turning into a bit of an opportunity when we discovered an unguarded frontier settlement and took that from them. But now we've got a new threat coming in. The Spanish send a fleet with some troops and land those troops right next to Florida's main settlement. So it looks like we're in trouble there. We've moved all of our forces recently up to the north end of our territory. We have nothing at all to use against these guys now. The place is fortified and has a couple of garrison units, but still, the enemy have double or more our numbers, so shouldn't be too hard for them to attack and take it if they want. I'm going to have to start moving units back in that direction to retake Florida if we need to, and I also need to go around and check my garrisons to see if I can make them any smaller, because we're so lacking in units right now, we're so spread across a gigantic area, we really need every unit we can on the front line so we can try and, in particular, end our war with the Iroquois since they're going to be just invading us constantly until we get rid of them. In the next turn we discover that the Spanish army actually didn't attack us so that was very generous of them. <laughs> Gives us some more time to start walking in that direction. Going to use the classic trick of walking into a settlement and then going out again because it slightly extends your movement range in most cases. So now we're just a couple of turns away from Florida. If the enemy continue to be indecisive or continue to wait for reinforcements or whatever they're doing then we might actually be able to get there in time. Now up to the northeast we do need to fight this Iroquois army that's coming towards us. It's only small and there's no real advantage to be gained by a winning this battlefield. But in Empire letting even a few units walk past your front line can be annoying because they can go and destroy infrastructure. And uh, even an army uh, of that size might actually be able to take a settlement because some settlements have almost no garrison at all. So anyway the battle itself was going to be a simple affair by the looks of things. I just needed to surround them with our vastly superior numbers and the fact we had cavalry and then attack them. I could only see their general because of course they can all hide in the open. I presumed the enemy would be just in front of the general but as I charged forwards there was no one there and in fact they had all of their troops quite far behind hidden in these bushes for some reason so that took me by surprise and means my rear attack isn't really going to happen because now we're actually in front of the enemy again but I'm just going to charge into them anyway with all of my cav. Lock these units down, in particular the musketmen who are here. It would be nice to just have them fight against the lancers even if that's not an especially good fight for us. Meanwhile, we'll just plow through from the front. These medicine men aren't quite as good as the regular warrior unit as I've mentioned before and we kill their commander right away. Plus more cav come in here to attack the muskets also. This battle's pretty much over. The only thing I wanted to do was test the uh, thing that people were saying in the comments for the first episode, which is that your cavalry can actually kill your own men as they run. And that definitely did seem to be the case. I saw my own units being annihilated by the cav moving through them as they pursued these other units. So that's bad news. I didn't even know that about Darth Maud. Now we've confirmed it at least. And we can actually see in the results here that we did lose a massive proportion of our total casualties from friendly attacks. The enemy killed by the enemy wasn't that much. So a few units escaped there and we've won this little bit of ground, but as I said, not so important. I don't want to go and attack the Iroquois right now actually because I feel like I can become more powerful because I have a bigger economy, so I wanted to wait around a bit. They actually came out to attack me with a larger army, and that battle was probably winnable, but again, there isn't too much to gain by winning that. My leftover forces may not be enough to actually go on, take enemy territory and hold it, so I'm just going to retreat, or if I'd already did, and now I'll just stand around. I'm going to wait in the forests on my border and try and replenish a few of my units bit by bit using the money we do have just to get a bit more powerful, and hopefully as uh, public order comes down I can tax more places to get even more money and just overall get a force that's far superior to the enemies. <laughs> I also need to repair all of these places but don't have the money to do that right now. 
We're actually in the next turn again now, and you can see the Spanish never attacked Florida for some reason. So surprisingly, I was able to get these reinforcements here before we lost the region. Really didn't expect that. Just some classic low quality AI. Now the enemy army intercepts me, so I'm forced to fight a battle against them as I get close. But they've just got mostly colonial militia, so obviously I'm not afraid of that at all. We've seen several times before how they do against our troops. Now I immediately rushed my men into this town to take cover because the enemy had artillery and I wanted to try and sneak up on it but because we are playing Empire Total War they've put the artillery out on their own quite far away from their main formation and they haven't even unlimbered it so it actually can't attack us uh, and that just means we can walk right up to it in safety so I can come out of the town and I just sent a unit to charge at the artillery and this didn't even prompt a response from them so <laughs> we're going to get this artillery out of the fight as the battle starts and the rest of the army also not going to support this position or come over to help. Handily their commander was actually in this unit and he died immediately so that's going to be a nice morale shock for the enemy. With that done we needed to go on to fight the militia but unlike in our previous battle against Louisiana where I could make the enemy army rotate to face my cav, in this case they could actually see my units, they couldn't hide in the open here for whatever reason so it looked like it was going to be a more standard attack. I still sent my cavalry behind them just since that's always a good idea anyway but the enemy weren't really reacting as you can see they're still going to keep their attention on my warriors as they should. Still though they eventually started reforming to put their units in a different order in the line for whatever reason. That allowed me to charge without being shot too much so I took the opportunity. Meanwhile their calf is attacking my calf behind them, did a lance a charge against them to try and weaken them and just generally lock them down and now that they're there my chief's bodyguards will have to charge in to fight with them as well. Now that's a fight we'll almost certainly win but actually my general, which is my good general Anoli, actually died right at the start of that fight, there's the notification on the left so that's a massive shame. At least my attack against their main line did go pretty well. They got a few shots off in places, but it wasn't enough to get the morale shock. That is the real danger. So now we're going to just completely annihilate these militia with absolutely no trouble. Those cav are gone as well. We overwhelmed them with really limited losses. It's just a massive shame that one guy we did lose was the leader who provided so many morale bonuses as well. That is the weakness I found at least of Native American factions when fighting against them is that even full strength units can rout when under musket fire because they're very scared of it. Anyway, we completely annihilated those militia, of course, and the battle ended very much in our favour. A complete slaughter, but as I said, a shame to lose such a powerful commander. Although in Empire, it's very easy to re-recruit generals, so it's not yes. going to be any sort of long-term loss. Annoyingly, a couple of militia actually got away. That means we're going to leave someone behind to stop them from getting up to too much mischief. They can, even with just a couple of troops, go and attack infrastructure to disable it and reduce our economy even further. So I would like to take them out. Fortunately, they just sort of wandered around and in the next turn I could attack them with our main force actually reinforcing. It was a terrible order to resolve. I think it would have been better if our main force there wasn't reinforcing as it happens. But anyway, that's that whole situation situation now resolved. As we move on, we get an interesting offer from the United Provinces. They want to ally with me. They're even willing to pay me for the privilege. I guess it's because they hate Spain so much. They like the fact that I'm uh, annoying Spain. So they want to be on my side and generally help me with that. So that's all good. We'll see if anything ever actually comes of that agreement. As I was waiting to build my forces up, an Iroquois army appeared and was in position to move west and take back that settlement we stole from them. So I had to reveal my hidden army and go after them. Both sides roughly equally matched, but I noticed the enemy have once again put quite a large emphasis on ranged units. So as long as we can get a melee going, we shall be fine in this battle. By the way, I'm still saying Iroquois. People did tell me in the comments it's actually Iroquois, but maybe that's just the pronunciation in America. I'm I'm going to say Iroquois because it makes me feel more sophisticated because <laughs> I think that's the pronunciation as it was originally from the French. In this fight the enemy's musketmen are actually firing while hidden, one of their special abilities which makes that weird effect where you just see muzzle flares coming out of nothing. 
My strategy, as you can see, is to just run at them, but with a nice wide line, so we'll surround them. The enemy are very blobbed up. They charge out with their melee troops, and now we have to take a downhill charge. That's not the best, but it does mean all of their ranged units now sitting back here are going to be very exposed to attack. They're also blocking their own line of sight because their position's so poorly, so that helps us as well. All we need to do is charge in from all sides and lock them down and just beat up the bowmen and musketmen as best we can. I'm being super be careful this time to not charge through my own men with the cavalry. I actually still kind of did it there, but it looks like we got away without losses. Now once they're in, they'll have to just stay in there because going out and back in would also cause that friendly fire effect. So I'm going to have to just uh, stick it out, go through the fight, but because the enemy are totally surrounded, you can see their morale already going down. They're going to be taking huge losses. Their unit at the front, even though it had a favorable engagement, was probably outdone by our numbers and experience. So we won even there. And we also discovered a few musketmen hidden separately to the main group who were sneaking around at the back here, but my cavalry can easily take them down and drive them off the field. In the centre, everything finally routes in this massive slaughter and that's the end of that. And it looks like my carefulness paid off because this time only one death due to our own attacks, so that's very nice. There are a couple of units that still have enough men to escape after that battle. They annoyingly go yes. to the west out of our movement range, but perhaps now they're weak enough that they actually can't uh, interfere with that settlement. They might still be able to go raid farms, but the nearest farms are actually quite far away from where they are now. So overall, wasn't too fast. I decided to just hire a new unit nearby. Hopefully we can take those guys out some other time. We're going to actually now focus on attacking the Iroquois. <laughs> I decided after that battle that even when things are even, we still win by such a large margin. We might as well just go for it with the units we have. We don't necessarily need these reinforcements, we'll just pull something off. So we advance. The enemy do have another army waiting in the next settlement, so we'll besiege it inside. A nice mix of units this time, even some cavalry on their side. I noticed they only have two turns of supply, so I thought I'll just besiege them because they'll probably yes. sally and that'll just make things a bit easier. And if they don't, then our reinforcements will arrive and that will certainly make things easier. Now Spain are at it again. They do that little move one more time, plopping another army down in Florida. So maybe this is going to be a nice repeating pattern. They really want to send a few units to Florida, they just don't want them to necessarily do anything. So now we'll have to deal with that first. The Iroquois do sally against us. It looks like they moved that one unit on the right side up to reinforce, but it didn't reinforce for whatever reason. So we've just got a straight defensive battle. We were pretty lucky in that we got a gigantic hill on our side, so I'm just going to move our main line up to the crest of the hill, ready to charge down. A lot of the enemy's army can hide in the open, so we can't really see them advancing towards us. We'll have to wait until they get close so that we can give our charge orders. Once they do get close, I realize they were turning their army to face my cavalry because, of course, much of my army is also hidden from their perspective. And as they turned, they came so close to us that I just had to start the battle, charging down into the edge of this unit to get things going. I had another unit charging just to the left to go behind that unit, but we actually discovered some hidden archers in these trees, so that was nice. We can quickly engage them as they try to escape. The rest of the lines being more conservative, I wanted the enemy to get a bit closer to me so we could get a definite downhill charge, don't want the fight to take place too far down the hill or we might end up on a flat bit of terrain. A cavalry battle on the right looks to be in our favour there with two units taking on the enemy's general. Now the centre fight is getting going as we messily charge down into the enemy and they're sort of charging up towards us. This is just going to be a straight brawl, neither side having a particular advantage. We need to make some sort of decisive blow to avoid it just being a gigantic meat grinder with units of the same quality just destroying each other. They even had their musketeers here in the centre firing onto my flanks but finally my calf have got behind the enemy to start locking these muskets down. One unit is engaged directly, the other unit can be engaged by a unit that was freed up further up the hill from one of the enemy units retreating. We get a nice rear attack because the muskets tried to leave just as we advanced into them, so that was good. Now everything is in place, it's just a matter of the grind, and the result was that the grind went in our favour. We had the enemy quite surrounded, so we got a morale victory, meaning we didn't have to lose too much stuff before the enemy started running, and now that they're running, the majority of their army will just be destroyed because of the positioning here. The battle lasted a tiny bit longer because they did have some medicine men at the base of the hill who didn't rout as everything else did, but my cav charged down, killing their commander apparently, who I suppose was among them, and that's going to be 
the end of that. Our losses are mounting to about a quarter of our army in the end, not too bad really, the enemy's losses complete, and because that was a sally battle and we completely destroyed the enemy, we actually get the settlement right away, we just move on in. That other army to the west does move off as if it's going to do some annoying raiding, but I think I just went and auto resolved it with the local garrison. Really, I'm more worried about what the Spanish are up to. I'm hiring a new general with the two units I have in the area, and he's also called Anoli, so perhaps he will continue the legacy of our previous successful commander. And he's going to go down to try and reach Florida before they attack. This time, it looks like they've actually brought some real line infantry who are substantially better than militia. They have much higher morale and much, much higher melee stats more comparable with our own. I also noticed that the blockade on our port has finally ended for whatever reason and I've actually now built a ship, it's a trade ship. Uh, it's not very powerful and it's not going to stand up against any sort of attack but I thought let's just send it off to the theatres to see if we can find a trade node and sit on it. We might be able to sneakily make some money off that, I'm not sure. Now back up with the Iroquois, we want to just continue on and attack their capital to the east before they build up too much stuff, so I'm just investigating the resistance to invaders thing and luckily it's not too high, we can really just move out with everything and go for them. There was this one unit of musketmen on the road that for whatever reason decided to fight our army as we advanced kind of annoying because it forces me to take an unfavorable auto resolve so ended up losing as many as we killed there but at least we got lots of positive traits on this commander so now he's going to be pretty effective <laughs> good to have a few guys with the morale boosting stats as i mentioned since their army can potentially be much more effective now the spanish take me by surprise they actually do attack florida before i arrive so it looks like the ai has learned from its mistakes this is good i thought it's probably worth fighting anyway to see how much damage we can do to the enemy we want to get them to a point where they're weak enough for the three units we have on the way to reinforce to be able to easily retake the place if we lose it one factor that will help us was the interesting discovery that our men actually could operate the guns on the fort, the little cannons, so that allows us to inflict some damage early on. The main problem we'll face is just going to be that the enemy have more units than we do. We can only defend two places and they can attack in many places so we can't cover the whole fort. As the enemy get close, our archers try to hit them with arrows, but they are still as useless as ever and inflict almost no damage. I think they might have killed one or two with this barrage. Interestingly though, it does have a negative effect on enemy morale when combined with the fact that they also took fire from the cannons, and miraculously the first unit to arrive actually routes. They still have most of their troops, so they'll come back later, but still, that is a promising start. Now, the enemy are just going to climb up onto the walls, and really this is all we can hope for. We need them to climb up to places where we can contest them and just kill loads of them as they come over the edge, and that may cause them to rout and go away. The problem we'll have is that because they're climbing up in three different places and we only have two units, uh, then of course they are going to be able to get into the centre of the fort without us stopping them after a while. So we need these melees to conclude as quickly as possible so that we can have extra units freed up. At first I had no hopes for that actually occurring, but it seems that one of the first men over the walls over here was the enemy's commander. He gets killed and the unit attacking my archers routes, so that's going to give us a chance to actually rush that unit back towards the capture point just as the first enemy units start coming into the courtyard. As a result, we did manage to set foot on the capture point as the enemy did, that prevents them from capturing it now that it's contested and we'll be left with a pretty difficult melee but at least no victory timer. It's only archers so taking on multiple units of line infantry may not be the best thing to do in melee but they're still okay in melee compared to those of other factions, the ranged units of other factions that is. So we'll just have to grind it out and it's going to be the same thing up on the wall but we then lose our own commander up here and that causes our units to start wavering. We're doing massive damage to the enemy, you can see the massive uh, pile of bodies just over the threshold of the wall there, but because our unit now routes after that commander loss, the enemy will be able to get these units up onto the wall. I thought we might actually be able to just about kill all of the enemy units coming over that part of the wall and then come down to support our archers. Our archers are slowly losing to the enemy, but only because the enemy's numbers are quite far superior. We're doing pretty well and actually trading effectively, killing loads of the enemy, but with the battle effectively lost, our guys end up routing. 
And that's going to be the end of that. A close defeat. Our first loss of territory. And we didn't really kill that many of the enemy. Perhaps a third of them. Not really enough to guarantee that we can retake it. Or even to guarantee that this enemy force won't go on to attack Georgia, for example. And take even more lands from us. We'll see what I can pull off next time.